This is the first video in a series on the topic of Java video game coding. The focus will be on Java. I don't intend to cover Android, but I might. The goal of this video series is to provide viewers with a better understanding of how to code and make video games. My method will be to create a mashup of the first levels of three classic Nintendo Entertainment System games, while providing explanations and source code. The games I intend to mash up are Super Mario Bros. 1, Metroid, and Kid Icarus Angel Land Story. This coding series draws a lot of inspiration from the other How to Code series that are available online, including Brent Arelli's How to Code Flappy Bird and How to Code Super Mario Bros. Thank you, Brent. The mashup I plan to create is not just three separate games, each running in their own separate worlds. I would like to be able to have all of those games characters all mixed together and playing together. Kind of a, like in Wreck-It Ralph, you know that scene at the end where everyone is piled into the Wreck-It Ralph game and they're all just having it out? That's what I'm looking for. So how is this possible? Isn't every game coded completely uniquely? Aren't all the sprites and sounds completely unique for each game? Some of the sprites will be reused, some of the sounds will be reused, and some of the code will be reused. Looking at these six games, do you notice some elements that they share? One similarity that I noticed is the way that the games handle their collision detection generally. It doesn't mean how they do collision detection between the sprites on the screen that are the characters and the enemies. I'm thinking more like the ground, uh, the platforms, the permanent immovable pieces. It seems to follow a 16 pixel by 16 pixel size uh, collision tile format. Now some things do not fit into this category uh, such as that door on the left in the picture of Metroid. It's an 8 pixel wide thing but in general the games use 16 pixel by 16 pixel collision tiles. There are many games that don't follow this simple 16 pixel by 16 collision tile format. For example, Double Dragon. I mean, that's a completely different animal. And when you look at Super Mario Bros. 3, there are some, say, diagonal floors. And that's okay, those are special cases, but we won't really get into that for now. This may seem like a daunting task. Making one game is hard enough, let alone making three games. But, I have an idea. I like to think that economies of scale would kick in at some point. Programming the game engine for the first game would be very difficult, and the output would be meager. Just a poor reproduction of the original game. But adapting this engine to include the second game would also be difficult, but not as difficult as for the first. And the next game should be also marginally less difficult to incorporate. So that's the economies of scale argument. There's also a flip side. One game by itself is fun, but two mashed together is better. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Besides all the effort necessary to create the code for this mashup, there would also be the difficulty of creating the sprites and the audio. However, there's a solution for this. If you need sprite sheets, check out the Spriters resource. It has dozens and dozens of games and many, many sprite sheets from within each game. If you're looking for a popular game, you'll have no problem finding your sprite sheets here. If you're looking for the maps for those classic Nintendo games, check out nesmaps.com. If you want to do some editing of sprites or editing of graphics in general, GIMP is your go-to tool. If you want to edit some video, or if you want to just watch video frame by frame, and maybe export a few frames, check out Shotcut. When you need some audio samples from those old games, check out the sounds resource. And if you need some music, check out the Video Game Music Preservation Foundation. Once you have your resources downloaded from there, you might need to do some editing. Audacity is great for that. Another free open source solution. As I mentioned earlier, I will be using Java in this series. It's a necessary download. I prefer to use the Eclipse IDE to do my coding. Uh, you can do it in any IDE you want. I've heard that NetBeans is uh, okay. Also IntelliJ IDEA. I don't really dabble with anything except Eclipse, so that's all I'm going to be talking about. And there's a Java library called libgdx that I will be making extensive use of. It can help speed up the game development process. 
Finally, I'd like to mention two tools that I've used extensively. FCE UX, which is great for emulating NES ROMs. You can save the output of your gameplay to an AVI and then watch it later frame by frame to see how things are working out. Also Tileed, which is great for creating the maps for the games. For creating the scenery, using different tile sets, it's just great. To demonstrate that this goal of mashing up games is actually possible, I'll finish this video with a clip of the work that I've put in so far to make Mario and Metroid good friends. If you like this video and you want to see more, you can hit the like button. If you want to know when more come out, hit the subscribe button. And now... Thank <laughs> you.